Hi, welcome to this talk. Uh, today I'm with uh, Kim Wells. Kim is the Director of Learning and Teaching at Caterham School in Surrey. Uh, Caterham was the first independent school in the country to achieve uh, De Bono's thinking school status. Um, Edward De Bono is a leading figure in learning about learning. Uh, and Kim is actually a De Bono master uh, trainer of education, uh, one of only three in the country. And he's going to talk to us today about De Bono's uh, thinking hats. Um, first things first, Kim, what actually are De Bono's thinking hats? Okay, well, well uh, Western thinking is all based around argument. It all comes from the, the big Greek three. Uh, and traditionally, that we tend to, if we want to discuss an issue or explore a problem, then we tend to argue it out. Um, so we will have our own standpoints and quite often uh, we will think of something that might support the other person's thinking, but we won't mention it because there are egos involved, there are emotions involved and so on. So De Bono developed a very simple system, a very powerful system called the Six Thinking Hats, which basically involves separating out thinking into six discrete segments. So instead of trying to process information and be creative and think of positives and negatives all at the same time, that everybody thinks in the same way, in the same direction at the same time. So for example, uh, if I put on my red hat, I'm thinking in an emotional way. I can say how I feel about a problem. If I'm interviewing a candidate for a job at school, I can just say with the red hat, I really didn't like the look of that person. And you don't have to justify why. But the beauty about the red hat is once you've worn it, you've got emotions out of the way because emotions can cloud our thinking. They're an important part of it, but they can get in the way of good, clear thinking. So you take your red hat off, you deliberately get rid of it, and you'll put on one of the other hats to do your more clear thinking. So with the white hat, I'm thinking about information, like a blank sheet of paper. I'm trying to fill it with as much data, facts, statistics, expert opinion on what I want to, do, to discuss. So if I'm buying a new car, how much will it cost? What's the mileage? What will the insurance on it be? Is it comfortable? What colour is it? Etc. Etc. So the white hat is for information. You then come to the two hats that you use to, to evaluate uh, what you've just found out under the information hat. So yellow is for logical positives, the benefits of something, and the black hat is the natural counterbalance. A lot of people confuse it with the naughty hat. They think it's the bad hat, but the black hat is more caution. Uh, so it's why might this be a problem, the sort of risk assessment hat. So you would then use these. And the lovely thing about these sorts of hat, this sort of way of thinking is that it's easy to switch your thinking. So for example, when you're wearing the yellow hat, if somebody comes up with a black hat comment, it would be appropriate to say, we're wearing the yellow hat at the moment, we're just thinking of the positives. Store that, and when we switch our thinking, when we take off our yellow hats and we put on the black hats, then we can think of the negatives, the disadvantages, as it were. The green hat is the one I think a lot of children find the most fun. It's the creative think outside the box hat. It's a sort of anything goes hat, if you like. And with the green hat on, we're, we're seeking alternatives or possibilities to the current system, the current topic, whatever it may be. So if you're discussing school uniform, you might say, is school uniform a good or a bad thing to discuss? Go through the other hats. You come to the green hat, and under that hat, you might come up with ideas, for example, why don't we wear school uniform Mondays to Thursdays? Children who do well in school or behave well in school, they don't have to wear school uniform, etc., etc. That would be green hat thinking. And finally, there's the blue hat, which is the decision-making hat. People tend to think of blue sky or overview of the whole process. So you wear this at the end, and you think, well, this is our conclusion. Or perhaps you might say, well, we need to go away and find out more information. These are our next steps. But the beauty of it is that you follow this very logical structured process and you examine the problem from all angles. Instead of people just seeing one angle or two angles, you're making your students, or, or if you're discussing it with adults, you're making everyone look at the problem through six different window panes, if you like, to see it from all angles. And how does that actually work? I mean, do you... Uh the children wear the hats themselves physically, or does the teacher wear it? I mean, how does it actually um, get an application in the classroom? Well, funnily enough, um, my sick form, even earlier this morning, actually, they were fighting over who got to wear which hat. Uh, the, the beauty of the, of the idea of having hats is the physicality and, and the idea that when you actually put a hat on, it colours your thinking in that way, if you like. But you can use the six hat six system without having any physical hats, of course. But in a classroom environment, it's definitely a bonus. And to actually be able to physically take off one and put on the other also helps the children. It underlines the fact that they are switching their thinking, they're switching the focus of their thinking. Right. And would you, in a lesson or in a uh, problem, divide very much 
between six, or would you only use a few hats? I mean, do you have any practical examples about? Uh, of course, yeah. Actually, um, it, it very much depends on the on the issue you're dealing with. Will so, for example, you may in one lesson decide just to use one hat if, if appropriate. If you're discussing a particularly complicated emotional issue like abortion, if you're asking children to, to examine abortion, you may use 12 hats of which six or seven will be red, right. and you're putting red in between every single hat. Right, okay. um, but at, on, on the sort of basic level, here's an example of, of some six hat work done by these, these students that I've got examples from here. They've been in the school exactly two weeks, and they've been taught the hats, uh, which takes roughly one lesson, one and a half lessons, to do it in detail. You can do it five minutes if you want to. And then we ask them to think about their first six weeks, uh, their first two weeks at Caterham using the six hats. So they started off with the white hat information. So they've written down things like what their form tutor's called, how many lessons are in a day, what is the school uniform, what time does school start and so on. Then we put on our red hats, how do they feel about their first two weeks and very quick fire, sort of scared at first, now I feel warm, now I feel happy, comfortable, welcome. We then put on the yellow hats, what were the benefits in their view of being in senior school as opposed to being in primary school. Mm -hmm. So something that people I enjoy having the range of teachers rather than just one teacher. Then we put on the black hats and they make comments about things that they feel less, less sort of comfortable with or, or things that they feel cautious about. So quite a few of them mention food, very important part of school and they might say, well I wish there was more cho choice at lunch times because I would be happy I would eat more at lunch times or whatever. Then the green hat was how could you improve next year's experience for next year's year sevens, next, next year's first years. What, what could we as the teaching staff do differently? Um, so they come up with ideas like we have a freshers fair earlier on to introduce all the clubs. And finally Blue, what is their conclusion about their first, their first two weeks at school? And trying to encourage them to justify, not just say this one. Oh, what a coincidence, this one says Cadem School has excellent standards, overall it's a fantastic school but maybe there could be some improvements in the uniform to make it more comfortable. So we're trying to get them to actually analyse what they've done at the end of the whole process. So here's an example from inside the classroom from a curricular um, perspective. So this is from GCSE English and as part of GCSE English you have to produce a piece of drama which is from a stimulus, a photograph, a, a piece of text or whatever. And we teach the children the six hats as a structure to, to manage that process. So this is from the First World War, and they're given some photos from the trenches in the First World War. So the teacher will sort of wear the blue hat at the start, if you like, and say, these are the hats I'd like you to wear, and this is the sequence for them. So here's the stimulus, a picture from the First World War, and first of all, we ask them to put on their red hats, first of all. And the first question would be, from that photo, how do you feel about that? What, what do you think looking at that, that picture? And the aim is not to just say, happy, unhappy, but to try and extend their vocabulary and come up with as many, many, a good range of responses. And then secondly, to actually put themselves in the shoes of the characters in the photograph and red hat it for those people. How do you think they would be feeling about that? Um, we also find that, that just in sort of homework terms, having the hats in, the, in your armory of sort of study skills as a child is really useful because things like essays, longer, extended pieces of writing, project work, coursework can seem quite daunting and, and two thirds of the problem is getting started. Having something like the six hats gives you a nice structure, gives you a, an obvious way of, of making that start and getting the pen moving with confidence that you know where you're going and how you're going to get to the end. Okay, thanks so much for uh, sharing this knowledge with us. I think it's, uh, it's got a really, really practical um, benefit to it um, and we're really grateful to uh, you giving up your afternoon to share with us. No problem, my pleasure. Thank you.